Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Your Royal Highness. Highness. How are you doing, sir? Very good, thank you. It's an honor to have you here, sir. Um, I actually watched your video on TED-Ed a few days ago, and I realized that you're a really strong supporter of the youth and the future generations. And I think that really resonates with the purpose of my book club, which is to establish a community of young learners who thrive and drive positive change in the world. And I aim to do this by making my book club a platform for children to express their ideas, their passion, and develop it into something that will drive positive, sustainable change in the world. Now, um, I would like it if you could give some advice to young ones on developing their passion into something that will drive positive change in the world, please. Well, thank you very much. Um... First of all, congratulations Thanks. on what you're doing, and this is exactly uh, the kind of thing we hope to see in your generation, uh, taking responsibility for yourselves, um, taking up leadership roles, um, not waiting uh, to be told what to do. And the world you live in is the world you know better than us. I keep telling my children I am too old to settle in about artificial intelligence and robotics and all these things are, this is the world that you've grown up in, it's not the world that I grew up in. And uh, sometimes even the advice we give can be outdated, but some things are uh, permanent. And one of those things that's permanent is of course change, because change is constant. And the idea that young people should have their own initiative, that young people should follow their ideas, um, go into innovation, um, plan uh, properly for it, be rooted in core values. But we must also understand that change is never change for its own sake. Okay, you drive change towards a goal, towards an objective, uh, towards creating um, a better society. And my advice is to always think about what areas you can make the most impact in on the largest number of people especially those that are at the bottom of the pyramid so we tell our children uh, for each one of you like you now um, there are millions that have not even had the opportunity to complete primary education not talk of going to secondary school not talk of speaking english so um, what can we do what can you do uh, with the privilege that you've received to change their world, to create an opportunity, if not for them, then for the children they will have. So they will begin to have something of the kind of education that you have, because that is the only way the society uh, in the long term will change for the better. So those are my general words of advice um, that should fit into any specific uh, project plans that you have. Thank you very much, sir. You said that change is permanent, and this change happens for a goal. And you actually gave us an example of a SMART goal, which we recently covered. So the first one is S for specific, and you just mentioned that we should see if the change that we're driving is um, suited to, towards a particular cause or particular category. For example, um, I'm most particular about SDG number four, which is quality education, and that is one of the main reasons why I started this book club. I would just like to ask any advice that you can give on financial literacy because in this ever-changing world, financial literacy is something that children need to adopt so that in the future, there won't be any financial crisis in the world. In fact, when I was governor of Central Bank, uh, we set up a financial literacy department under uh, consumer protection. And we had a program where the governor and the deputy governors and the CEOs were to go around to secondary schools and give classes of financial inclusion. I did one, it was recorded, it was showed. Unfortunately, with these things, uh, when you leave office, they disappear. But if that had continued, we would have seen more because we wanted to send this message to young people at a very young age on the importance of financial literacy, uh, to teach them uh, basic uh, financial literacy about um, savings products, about investments, about insurance, about financial risk. And it, it was going very well. So when you consider the high levels of financial exclusion 
in less developed countries, um, and in particular, uh, if it's a country like Nigeria, and you've got wide disparity, for example, huge levels of exclusion in the north compared to in the south. Um, they're also tied to your SDG4, they're tied to levels of education. The more educated people are, the more uh, they're likely uh, to uh, take advantage of diverse financial products. But there are products that um, are out there, uh, mobile uh, banking, now we've got uh, payment service banks, money give credit products. But there's also need to have an awareness uh, of what are the benefits and drawbacks of these products. People need to know when they borrow that they're going to pay interest and when they borrow they need to put in that money in a profit-making venture but also be aware of the products that are out there and I'll give a simple example um, insurance products so you have all these local people who have um, local taxis or um, tricycles and that's their means of livelihood and then the tricycle has an accident and that's the end bankruptcy and there's very little awareness of either conventional insurance or Islamic takaful. Okay, so um, it's extremely important from a very young age for young people to have knowledge of financial literacy as they grow. But I do hope you also find a way of reaching young people who are not in the formal schooling system. Because those in the formal schooling system are at very little risk. At the end of the day, they end up going to, go to university, they, they, they know what it is to have a bank account. It, they learn that in the course, but there are many people out there who have no idea and we've got to think of how to reach them. Thank you very much for your advice, sir. I really appreciate it. And I'm very happy to know about the initiative that you had, that you went to schools and thought about financial literacy. That's really good. There's actually a huge contribution to SDG number four, which is quality education, and SDG number nine, which is industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Because at the end of the day, if we're able to level up the financial literacy in the world, as well as education, we'll be able to contribute more to the industries but through innovation, increased innovation. Yes. And that means increased opportunities, which leads to a better, healthier industry. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And all the best.